And then that coach tells the other coach, oh, this is a horrible practice. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. 20 years of bodybuilding. He doesn't know what he's doing. Oh, my God. Right? It just keeps, <laughs> it keeps going. And the wall gets thicker again. Vigorous Steve here. Let's discuss why bodybuilders take themselves way too serious sometimes, or perhaps all the time. Well, it really depends on the individual, right? Some bodybuilders can take those comments and the jabs and the constructive criticism with a smile and just laugh it off because they understand that they can't please everybody on this planet, no matter how much of a positive contribution they're trying to make to the fitness industry or the quality information that they provide, or how hard they train in an attempt to inspire others to train just as hard and get the game train going. Some people will simply not appreciate or respect you for it, so we just shrug our shoulders. It is what it is, you know, let it go, and then maybe a decade or two from now, people will actually appreciate it a little bit more. And if they don't, well, then it's their loss, right? But there's other bodybuilders out there that are so proud, maybe a little bit conceited, and might even think that they're God's gift to the fitness industry, that they, uh, they don't take shit from anybody. Not even a fart. Or a whiff. And they don't want to even uh, come close to Tutka because the smell reminds them of ass. And it's usually these guys, these bodybuilders, that take themselves very, very serious. And it seems that they're always in a perpetually shitty mood, which is a shame. Because bodybuilding is supposed to be a very enjoyable endeavor that we choose to do. Nobody's forcing us to bodybuild, right? And we have to take the good with the bad. And, and let's be honest, the bodybuilding is a lot of bad. So in this video, I want to explain to you guys a little bit why sometimes you might get a response from a bodybuilder that you did not expect. Um, look at it this way. Let's open it up like this. And for the guys that are in social media, right? It's, it's basically a one-way direction. So I'm sitting here on this couch. All you see is the couch and the backdrop and that kind of stuff. And you don't see the rest of this room. And I'm sitting here talking to an audience that I've, most of you I've never met. And it's an increasingly growing audience. Now we're at 24,000 subscribers. So the audience is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But the majority of you guys I've never met. And I'll probably never meet because I'm in Thailand. And many of you will not have the opportunity to fly to Thailand. Uh, because you, maybe you like to go on holiday somewhere else, right? So it's basically a one-way direction. And you guys see me every day or you know, multiple times per week as long as I keep up with the YouTube algorithm upload requirements. So you guys see me every day and then you might think I'm one of your bros. And then you leave a comment, which normally one of your bros would say, yeah, yeah, right on you, bro. But, you know, me, the content provider that you see every day, I don't know you. So it, it might... You know, I might interpret your comment a little bit wrongly, right? Because probably a comment section is probably the worst way to communicate. And even communicating through Instagram or by email, sometimes those words get misinterpreted. So that's one of the ways why you might get an adverse uh, response for myself or another bodybuilder, um, simply because the translation of the message is lost. And you might talk to me like I'm one of your bros, but I don't consider you one of the bros so i don't accept that comment like you're one of my bros right so there's a little bit of a discrepancy there and i highly appreciate all the comments don't get me wrong but sometimes it uh, it goes a little bit over my head and the message is lost and i might have an adverse reaction and you see that with a lot of bodybuilders all right you guys see us uh, all the time or at least the ones that are very active on social media and even though you might consider us to be friends unfortunately i don't know you so sometimes those comments are, yeah, they don't land well. Let's put it that way. Now, another reason why, you know, bodybuilders take themselves way too serious is because it takes a lot of effort to be a bodybuilder. And we don't need to be constantly reminded that we're getting smaller or that we're looking older or that we're suffering from organ stress or particular body parts are uh, weak and we should bring them up. Trust me, we know. <laughs> we know we've been doing this for a long time. And we're our own worst critics. We look in the mirror and most of us are never, ever 100% happy. We look at the mirror and the eyes immediately glance to the flaws. So, I know that I need to bring my quads up. 
and my triceps up and I need to shrink my waist and that the, the performance enhancing drugs are uh, taking away from my facial aesthetics. I mean, now I'm still drug free. Well, anabolic free, let's put it that way. So I'm still looking, uh, you know, my age, but I'm sure when I go back on the gain train, you know, with the anabolic androgenic steroids, I will start to look a little bit older, even if I keep the dosages moderate. And the audience reminding you like, oh, Steve, you look older now. Oh, you look so much better now off the steroids, right? Trust me, we are consciously aware. We know what we need to improve. And you don't need to remind us all the time in every video. It's another good way to get an adverse reaction from a guy who spent his entire life and made so many sacrifices and created an entire new normal for himself, right? By not, uh, by bringing uh, the dirty Tupperware to the family dinners or to the cinema or uh, to the restaurant, right? There's an insane amount of dedication involved and trying to undermine the dedication with a simple comment, oh, your, your triceps suck, bro. You should train your triceps harder. Yeah. That we've been trying for the last 10, 20 years. <laughs> so you don't have to remind us, really. We are consciously aware of what they need to improve. And those comments will also be met with an adverse reaction. So let me put it this way. Maybe, maybe we can do a little bit of a comparison. Let's say you're an artist. Yes, so you guys can understand the situation a little bit better if you're not a bodybuilder or you haven't been bodybuilding for such a long time. Let's uh, give you guys an example. Let's say you're an artist and you've been painting for a while, a couple of years, you know, you, you might have sold a couple of paintings here and there to friends, a couple hundred dollars, you feel validated that way. And then one of your uh, good friends, who's also a painter and actually quite established, quite respected, and goes to the auction regularly to sell his paintings there, he invites you and says, bro, I think it's time you, uh, you know, you're, you're doing very well. Your art should be able to sell for a pretty good price at the auctions. So... He introduces you to the auction and, uh, you know, you're sweating a little bit. You're a little bit nervous because you don't know how much your art piece is going to sell for. But you end up with $25,000 for a single art piece, which is more than you ever could have imagined. Way more than you thought was possible. $25,000 for a single art piece. You feel validated. You feel good. You feel respected. You feel that your efforts are finally paying off after five years or 10 years of painting from your basement, basically, right? Now, your buddy, who has been going to the auctions regularly, before he sold an art piece for $200,000, and now he's selling it for $500,000, which is, and then you, think, you see the potential, and you're like, man, I just first try, I got $25,000, and he's just leveling up from $200,000 to $500,000 for a single art piece. He's banking hard. And you see the potential and it gets you motivated, right? To keep going and going and going. So you see that somebody else is selling an art piece for a million dollars. You're like, whoa, that's a lot of potential. <laughs> it's a lot of potential. It's not art that you would make yourself. Maybe not art that you would find enjoyable to look at yourself. But you see the potential. There's a million dollar art piece in the same group of people that you uh, find yourself in, right? The same niche. Now, on the way out of the auction, you go to your art piece to have a look at it one last time before it goes to the new owner and you cash in your check. You walk past your buddy, he leans in, gives you a nod and a wink and tells you in your ear quietly, welcome to the club. You've made it. You'll be at 500,000 before you know it. And then he also says, be careful for that guy that has a million because once you start selling your art pieces for $100,000, yeah, he might start to talk badly about you or uh, gives you a little bit of energy that uh, you didn't ask for. So, you get a little bit concerned, but you see the potential and you're happy with what you've accomplished. Now, you walk to your art piece, you see the guy that sold art for a million dollars, doesn't even give you a second, just look at you, just walk straight past you. And before you get to your art, you see a guy that is also at the auction, sold his art for $2,000, $3,000 and got a little bit discouraged, right? Because he saw the, he was probably the lowest selling uh, artist there. So you have a little bit, 30 minutes of a chat, and you uh, open up, you said, oh, listen, I, I use these and these stroke strategies to make my art a little bit more three-dimensional. And I got a little bit of a boost from the 200,000 uh, art guy. 
maybe I can give you a little bit of a boost in return. And then before you know it, you're at 25,000 and maybe even 200,000 or 500,000 yourself. Just keep going, bro. It took me five to 10 years and it might take you five to 10 years as well. Now you finally get your art piece. And then there's a guy standing there who came to the auction just to use the bathroom, right? It's an open auction for everybody, an open house. You can look at the art and then make your bid as needed. And this guy just wanted to go to the bathroom. And you walk to your art and the guy asks you, did you make this? You say proudly, yes, because you just sold it for $25,000, right? And then the guy says, oh yeah, that's how my uh, little daughter of four years old makes uh, paintings with her crayons. She could make this in 30 minutes. See where I'm getting at? Well, I'm sure you can decipher this whole story. Uh, basically, the, the guy that uh, commented about uh, the crayons uh, and his little daughter would be able to make her his art piece uh, is a drive-by shit commenter on YouTube. And it hurts. Yeah, I'll be honest. It hurts to get a comment like that, even though most of the comments are, of course, amazing. I mean, look at my like-to-dislike ratio. But I'm sure you guys are smart enough to uh, piece this together by yourself. And every time a shit comment like that happens, you build a little bit of a wall around yourself, right? It's just a protection mechanism. And uh, many bodybuilders have been doing this uh, for a long time. In the beginning, you start bodybuilding and then the general population is like, oh, steroids. When you stop training, all that muscle will disappear into fat. It's completely disregarding that you're going to be muscular for decades. <laughs> you know, you're going to look good for decades and a lot of doors are going to open for you. Completely disregarded. It's a one comment try to undermine all of your hard work, but it's general population. And then the longer you stay in bodybuilding, the further and further and further you're trying to distance yourself from these people, including old friends, including family members, including uh, colleagues, whatever. You're just trying to push them away slowly and steadily to the point you're only surrounded by positive people who actually appreciates your bodybuilding endeavor. And those are usually uh, your peers, right? Your friends that you find in the gym. So now you're surrounded with uh, people with the same aspirations and same interests. So the general population comments, oh, steroids, blah, blah, you know, the drive-by shit comments that you get all the time, those uh, you're, you get pretty much immune to because you can build a little bit of a wall around yourself. And, and again, we don't take ourselves too serious. So we just laugh it off and uh, move on with our bodybuilding aspirations. And then at one point, when you feel you've learned quite a bit about bodybuilding and you feel confident about your uh, level of knowledge, and you feel that you're ready to share that with other people, either through coaching or ebooks or a private membership website, or by going on YouTube or having a podcast, right? You, you take your knowledge public. And then general population returns <laughs> with the same comments. Or sometimes it's even the peers. Maybe they don't have the same level of expertise as you have, but the comments returns in the jabs and the constructive criticism. So now you're tr actively trying to educate people. And, uh, you know, teach people that there's a better way, even opening up about your own mistakes and everything you did wrong in your uh, decision making process during your bodybuilding, trying to open up and prevent other people from making the same mistakes. Those comments will return with a vengeance and the wall you build around yourself is going to get thicker and thicker and thicker. Really, really. You just become immune to it, which is very unfortunate. Again, because most of the comments are going to be, you know, nice and appreciative and, and positive, right? And unfortunately for the bodybuilders, because, you know, many of us start this endeavor, uh, not because we want to look like Arnold, uh, but because we, um, we were bullied, something like that, right? We had a body image disorder and we tried to build this muscle suit around it to get a little bit of confidence in return and then maybe along the way we get very inspired and we do want to look like Arnold or a little bit more muscular than the average uh, population but a lot of us start bodybuilding um, perhaps for the wrong reasons right? and then you know you start bodybuilding when you're young maybe you get bullied body image disorder or you were skinny fat right and you're trying to make a positive uh, change to your life and all we want is just a little bit of validation for the hard work and not to be undermined or the, or the journey has been completely undone with a couple comments, which is always highly disrespectful. And again, you know, the longer you do this and the more known you get, uh, the more those comments will start to, you know, affect you cumulatively to the point, again, that the wall around you gets built thicker and thicker and thicker. 
and you start to take yourself way too serious. And then because you have so much knowledge and everybody around you is uh, wrong or stupid or whatever, it's just simply because you got hardened. So that smile gets turned to a frown, simply because of the comment section. So, which is a true shame. Now, of course, when you can look at it the, uh, from another perspective, is that the guys that take themselves way too serious is that they always want to be right. Right? It has nothing to do with the comments. It has to do with uh, the guy being right. They want to be the one that introduced particular information to the fitness industry. They want to be the first and they want to be uh, respected for it. Again, you know, a little bit of high mighty God's gift to the fitness industry, uh, uh, you know, scenario. So they said, uh, you know, I did this for the fitness industry. I did this. And they list all their accolades. I was the one. I was the first one who introduced this. It doesn't matter. Really, it doesn't matter. Because if you're an educator or somebody who tries to bring something new into the fitness industry, we're all trying to make this fitness industry better, right? And yes, you will not always get credited for it. It happened to me many times. And honestly, I don't mind because I want people to have a better quality of life by introducing certain practices. And not all of them are going to be adapted. You know, I honestly don't mind because even if only one person adopts uh, a particular practice for, you know, safer PD choices, um, then I, I feel that my mission is accomplished. And if a hundred people adopt it and a thousand people and maybe a million people, maybe 10 years, 20 years from now, who knows? Um, then again, you know, it adds more validation, but it doesn't mean that I need the, you know, the validation that I was the one who brought it to the industry because maybe you heard something on a larger channel or from your friend who got inspired by me and forgot to mention that he got it from me or, or maybe even just blatantly ripped it off and uh, yeah, said it was his own information. You know, in the end, in the bigger picture, the fitness industry is improving and, you know, you just have to come to the realization that you will not always get appreciated for your contribution. Whether that's through the comments or being recognized for the contribution, you know, again, it is what it is and you can't fault people for it because the industry as a whole got better. And that's the ultimate goal, right? Or that's my ultimate goal. I just want this industry to be better off as where I found it, you know, where I found it was on the forums and everybody hides behind anonymity and spews off all these protocols without the blood work or the pictures to back it up. I prefer to show the total picture so you, the audience, can make an accurate assessment of the protocols. And if it was worth it, you show the progress pictures, you show the blood work, if you were able to resolve the blood work or not, and what it took to get there. Right? Whether that was the performance enhancing drugs or the sacrifice or the supplementation or the spending on blood work and ultrasounds and MRIs and CAT scans and uh, you know all that stuff. Right? I, I think we have enough of this uh, ideal image of uh, a picture and we attach so much value to it, but a single picture on Instagram is not the total picture. And many of the bodybuilders understand this, uh, but maybe the audience does not. So hopefully I can change this sport in the right direction that way. And again, nobody appreciates me for it. <laughs> so be it, man. I don't, I don't really mind. It's, um, you know, some people mind, obviously, like, oh, well, and I get a little bit mopey, like, I'm the one who introduced this, and why don't you respect me for it? And why does nobody, uh, you know, switch to this uh, new practice? Uh, I don't understand why you don't understand, right? And it's, again, it's a learning experience for everybody. Not everybody's going to have the same amount of knowledge because it takes years to get there. It takes years. And sometimes you can't even recognize particular information and the quality of it. Um, until you get a little bit more experience. And then again, it's easy to dismiss. Oh, that's not true. Oh, that's not true. And even, and even the coach is doing it amongst each other, right? Oh, this is a horrible practice. And then that coach tells the other coach, oh, this is a horrible practice. This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. 20 years of bodybuilding. He doesn't know what he's doing. Oh my God. Right? It just keeps, <laughs> it keeps going. And the wall gets thicker again. So. I think we, we all need to take a step back sometimes and understand for ourselves that we're all trying to do the same thing, or at least the content providers that are on YouTube, and whether they have uh, you know, a large Instagram following or on YouTube, or they have a, you know, a private Facebook group or a membership website or eBooks, however you want to produce the content, whether that's behind the paywall or not, 
we're all doing our absolute best, our absolute best to bring cutting edge information that people can benefit from. Some of the information is not going to be 100% complete because the science is not there or the experience is not, the, the, the cumulative experience of the fitness industry is not there or uh, it's simply so niche that nobody's able to really understand why it's beneficial. But trust me, every content provider and every bodybuilder, no matter how entry level they are, they're all trying to make a positive contribution somehow whether that's on their own physique, inspiring people at their gym, you know, so listen, I'm making progress, I'm doing this transformation, and maybe they inspire other people at the gym to make a similar transformation. And as you get more and more developed, you might be able to share those experiences and uh, inspiration with other people. And as you get more and more developed, you start helping people one-on-one, -on -one, and you maybe introduce something new to the fitness industry, and the whole fitness industry improves. Don't take yourself too serious for it. Really. And don't fault content providers for particular information that you might not understand yet. Because we're all trying to make this fitness industry better. We don't have to build a huge shell around ourselves uh, so we get impervious to the comments, whether those comes from the comment section, people on Instagram, or our peers. I go to bed at night understanding that every day the fitness industry gets better from my contribution. I mean, it doesn't matter if another coach tries to, uh, you know, m mitigate or disprove or, you know, shoots it down. Honestly, I don't mind because I know that people are benefiting and I'm not going to make my wall in or thicker <laughs> than it needs to be beyond what uh, the general population perceives of us because it's the fitness industry that I found my home. And many of you have you found your home in the fitness industry. But again, we have to take everything with a smile, the good with the bad. There's a lot of bad in bodybuilding and we have to laugh it off. All the mistakes that we make, all the health complications we get ourselves into for a little bit of bodybuilding, uh, muscle accrual, all the negative comments. Take the good with the bad, enjoy the journey. And then maybe you can have more pleasure from your bodybuilding experience as well. Again, take it with a smile, guys. I hope this helps. I know it was a little bit of a rambling video but i just see so much stuff that i um wish people aren't saying whether that's in the comment section or peers uh or people who should know better <laughs> because they're content providers as well and again it's a learning experience for all of us and the longer we do it the more knowledgeable we get and everybody's going to be at different stages of their knowledge accrual and some of that knowledge is going to overlap and agree with each other and a lot of that knowledge is going to collide and be the complete polar opposite, simply because it's based on our personal experience with ourselves and perhaps clients if you're a coach. Hope that helps, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're looking for the most comprehensive guides to bodybuilding pharmacology, you can find the ebooks on my website, vigorousteve.com slash shop. If you're looking for personalized advice, you can find the rates to my services in the services section and contact me directly if you're interested. Follow me on Instagram, at VigorSteve. Vigorous crew, you guys know what to do. You already follow me on Instagram. You're already subscribed. I highly appreciate you guys and all those insanely positive comments that are solely fueling my... No, no, it's not fueling my ego, guys, really. I, I try to stay as humble as possible, and I try to keep that wall around me thick enough to be impervious for the shitty uh, shit, drive-by shit comments and thin enough so I can receive all of your love and appreciation and uh, take that with a smile as well and not let it get to my head. It will stay somewhere here because it's bodybuilding and not face building. Follow me on Instagram at Vigor Steve. Did I mention that already? I think I did. Either way, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.